Today we're going to take a little walking tour around the Court of Sciences and learn about sustainability at UCLA. The biggest way that UCLA has an impact in sustainability is through our teaching and research. But in addition, we also see the physical campus as a living laboratory. So we want to make sure that we practice what we teach. The place we're starting right here is Meyer and Rini Luskin Conference Center. So this is a LEED Platinum facility. UCLA has the second most LEED projects in California. This is a bit more of a behind the scenes tour of UCLA. It's not necessarily stuff you would see on the normal campus tour. UCLA is a major leader in sustainable transportation. And actually a lot of those efforts started with the 1984 Olympics. So it's kind of this full circle moment for us because we're gonna be hosting the Athletes Village for the 2028 Olympics. We have this amazing initiative called Healthy Campus Initiative that is really focused on making UCLA the healthiest campus in the nation. And so some of that is around what we call active transportation, biking and walking. And UCLA actually works with six different transit agencies. And then coming up the road here, this is actually one of UCLA's own buses. We call it our Bruin bus system. And we now have five buses that are fully electric. And within the next few years, we'll be transitioning all of our buses to electric. So you're probably wondering why on a sustainability tour am I taking you into uh, and underneath a parking structure. So right behind me, what you're gonna see is a couple of stormwater capture tanks. They take the stormwater runoff from this parking structure and then they pump it into the landscaping here and they use the recycled water instead of potable water. But this was a student-led, student-designed project. So water is a really key part of our sustainability efforts. And we have an award-winning program that recycles condensate from HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and from laboratories, and then takes that condensate for use in our cogeneration plant, which we'll see at our next stop. So we're now on top of parking structure nine, and we're stopping here um, because there's a good view of our campus cogeneration facility that generates electricity for UCLA, and then uses the waste heat from that electricity to generate steam and chilled water to heat and cool the campus. So there are pipes coming from that plant that go all over campus. You've probably heard of the UCLA tunnels. So those are utility tunnels, and that's actually, there's pipes running throughout the tunnels, seven miles of tunnels throughout UCLA to help distribute the utilities from this plant. By using waste from one process for another process, we saved a lot of carbon emissions over the years. If the grid goes down, like in a big earthquake, our cogen plant has the ability to do what's called island, meaning it can disconnect itself from the grid and function as a microgrid to power UCLA. So in this area, um, what you're looking at is some of the on-site solar for UCLA. So this solar is connected to electric vehicle chargers that are actually designed by UCLA researchers. Behind me is LaCrette's Hall which is the home of the Institute of Environment and Sustainability. That building sits on top of a water tank that is basically as big as the building. So it's a five million gallon chilled water tank and it's a form of what's called thermal energy storage. So we're basically taking chilled water that we produce with electric chillers when the electricity is less expensive at night and then we're able to use that during the day around the campus. Behind me is the Court of Sciences Student Center. This particular facility is a LEED Gold facility, like many of our other LEED projects, but it's also uh, the only building on campus that has a green roof. It provides some insulation and reduces the heating and cooling load of the building, and it also reduces stormwater runoff. Over the years, we've started to transform our grass areas into drought-tolerant native landscaping Throughout UCLA, researchers are not just looking to the region, but then looking how LA can be a demonstration for the world. And this is what's called a bioswale. So this is a feature where when it rains, it actually fills up like a creek, and then it's designed to infiltrate that water back into the ground instead of having it run off to the storm drain and go to waste that way. When you do that through the landscape, we also call that nature-based solutions. So this whole area, this used to be all just ivy, and the students and staff worked together to remove it, and now this is all native plants, so this is gonna be an amazing pollinator garden. I'm sure you've heard all over the world, pollinators are declining. Not only will this garden support the hummingbirds, but it'll also support our, our native bees as well. In a number of areas, we've been creating these outdoor study spaces. 
So this is again an area that was just ivy before or some of them were just grass. And we take that out and create these sort of parklets and also save water and address biodiversity at the same time. I wanted to pause here because this landscaping and, and our landscape plan in general was informed by the original caretakers of our land here, which are the Tongva, Gabrielino Tongva. So that's a really important part of our landscape plan as well, is trying to really learn from the original caretakers of the land to learn from what we call traditional ecological knowledge or indigenous knowledge. Thanks so much for joining our tour of sustainability at UCLA. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to our website, sustain.ucla.edu.